How's, uh, how's Cole Henry feeling after a few days? Felt, he's felt much better yesterday when I came in and saw him. And uh, uh, it's, I'm hoping that if it's going to progress nicely and, you know, I'm feeling good about it. You know, he needs a couple of days of rest. And uh, yeah, I think he was just fatigued, you know. So um, we're trying to figure out why, you know, after 50 whatever pitches he was fatigued. But um, yeah, I thought he threw the ball great. And, and uh, I was really happy and very discouraged when they told me that he was tightening up. I couldn't understand that. But uh, he, um, he's feeling better after yesterday he felt better. I haven't seen him yet today. But he's going to be a no throw again today. And I'm assuming that he's feeling better and will progress as the week goes on. Do you feel comfortable with a, a plan and a rotation going into the, the weekend series? Do you have an idea yet? Uh, yeah, sure I do. <laughs> I'm not going to share it with you today, Mike. I'm sorry. <laughs> I will on Thursday. But a lot of it has to do with what happens tomorrow, to be honest with you. We have plan A and we have plan B. And we're going to see how things go tomorrow with Landon. And hopefully he's going to go out and pitch great. And, you know, we'll, we'll continue to discuss it over the next couple of days internally. Could Landon extend tomorrow and still pitch this weekend? Probably not. Uh, I mean, it depends what you define by extend. Could you go like five or plus innings to fifth this weekend? I don't know. I don't, okay. I don't think so. Probably not. I would. My guess would be no. So, as the game starts to unfold, we'll have to make that decision. By the and it'll a lot of it will be based on you know how sharp he is and what he's doing and you know like I said, Alan and I have already been discussing things, so we'll have a plan going in and and then we'll react to it accordingly. With Landon. He seems so wrapped up in like trying to be really perfect, and it almost seems like a double-edged sword in a way. Like it makes him great, but can it also sort of get him in his own head a little bit? It's a good question. Um, he uh, he's a he's a perfectionist. I can see that about him, and I think that's going to work really well for him. The problem is, you know, he's pitching at a different level now. You know, from high school to big-time college baseball, and. You know, he expects himself to be perfect on every pitch, and it's just not feasible. Nobody's perfect on every pitch, not many of them. You know, the side of Aaron Nola, let's put it that way. But even Aaron had his learning curve. You know, I think Aaron was like seven and four maybe his freshman year. And remember, you know, his first start over at McNeese State, boy, it was tough. Struggled to get through five innings. And his first start in the SEC, he gave up, I think, five runs in the first inning. Uh, so, you know, it, it, you know, there's a learning curve for every kid. And he has to learn when to trust his stuff and when he has to be very precise with his pitches. But I think one of the biggest problems for him right now is just commanding his curveball. He's just not getting his curveball over the plate enough times to keep the hitters honest. And, you know, obviously tomorrow night, if, if he's capable of doing that, if he does do that, then, you know, he'll, he'll be able to... You know, pitch much more effectively than he has. What's the latest on Salgars' kind of progression with his knee? Progressing. You know, he's hopefully going to catch his first bullpen today, and uh, you know, it'll be gr it'll be really good. You know, when when he's capable of catching in a game, I don't think it'll be this week. I'm hoping by next Wednesday against Nichols that that he'll be able to catch in a game. That's always been kind of the plan, but it just give us a little more depth at that position and. Personally, I think he'll start hitting better once he's catching as well. You know, he just he'll see more pitches. He'll be able to see breaking balls out of the pitcher's hand and all that kind of stuff. You know, DH is a tough job, man. When you're when you're used to being behind the plate and catching all the time, and, you know, he hasn't he hasn't swung the bats as swung the bat as we had hoped, and nor as he had hoped. So maybe something like that will get him going. If, if Mathis keeps swinging the stick the way he has the past couple of games, does that make that decision tougher for you? No, there's not going to be a big decision. Brock Mathis will always be an important part of the team. It'll just be a matter of him not catching every single inning, every single game, which is where we're at right now. And, uh, you know, I'm just real proud of Brock. You know, he's, he's done a, a tremendous job. He's been a great leader. His hitting's improving. You know, we need to start throwing out some base runners, you know, obviously. Um, you know, he had a pass ball the other day that that hurt us. You know, that's that's you know, he's better than that. You know, he's he just can't have a pass ball with the runner on third base. Um, it, you know, it was a backup. You know, he's expecting the slider to break this way, and it kind of just backs up on him. But you still have to, you know, 
keep your eye on the ball and glove that ball. And he knows that. So he, he hasn't been perfect. But I, I love the kid. I mean, I'm telling you, he's, he's a competitor. He fight, he's a fighter. You see him get hurt during the game, and he just shakes it off and keeps playing. And he got some big hits for us. So his hitting's getting better. And, uh, you know, so I, I don't think, you know, Saul Garza is going to come in and just take away his job. I just think it will be the combination of the two guys in some way. Anything new with Jaden? Jaden continues to feel better every day. Um, you know, the, the pain that you try to create when you start twisting his arm all in different weird directions at this point has subsided. So that's a good thing. So, uh, so I would imagine that sometime this week, if he continues to feel no pain, they'll start some what they call pre-throwing strengthening exercises. And, and if that goes good, then he'll, we'll start putting a ball in his hand and let him start throwing again. And of course, once he starts throwing again, there's gonna, he's gonna need time to build back up. So I can't really give you a timeline on when we expect him to be back available to us. How he's been kind of a Swiss Army line for you guys. Yeah. How have you seen the justice every day? Well, you know, you, you didn't know this, but Brant Broussard uh, sprained his ankle the other day in the dog pile after Smith's uh, game winning hit Friday night. So he's not even going to go on the trip tomorrow. He wasn't available on Saturday, but he, Brant was going to play one, at least one of the games on Saturday, uh, but he was unavailable, as I mentioned. So, you know, Hal's, you know, Hal, listen, when we recruited Hal, we knew at minimum what we were going to get was a very good defensive importer that could play anywhere for us. He could be a great utility player, he could be a starting player for us, depending on how well he hit. And, um, you know, his hitting, his batting average has kind of dropped off, but a lot of that is because I've given, you know, I've made him work the counts a lot more than we did at the beginning of this season. You know, he, um, He's not a power hitter. He's not going to be a you know, gaps guy. He's a singles guy. So in many cases, in his case, sometimes a, a base on balls is as good as a hit because you're getting on base. Whereas, you know, if he crushes one and, you know, it's a routine fly ball to the center fielder, that, what good does that do us? So I've been forcing him to take a lot more pitches and make the pitcher throw strikes. So I've personally gotten him into a lot of two-strike counts, which makes it more difficult for him to get hits. But it's also more of a contributing player. He's drawn, what, four or five blocks in the last three or four games. So, you know, he's created some, he's created some good uh, offense for us just simply by drawing some walks. The top four guys in the lineup the last two weekends is yeah. not good enough. Well, those are your words, Brian, of course. But, um, you know, obviously our t for our team to be successful, the top four guys in our lineup have to produce in a big way. And, you know, these last two weeks have not, you know, I mean, they've all had their moments. You know, Watson had a great weekend at Texas. Cabrera got a big hit at Texas. Um, you know, Antoine's gotten a couple of hits. You know, Josh has had a few hits. But they haven't, you know, all put it together at the same time. When they put it together at the same time, we got a good offensive team. And, uh, you know, that, you know when, they're, when they struggle, then, then we struggle. But... You know, we found a way to win two of the three games. I wish we'd have won them all, but, you know, it always can be worse, too. And I think when I think that we held Andrew Vaughn to one hit on the weekend <laughs> and, uh, you know, we needed a game-winning hit in the bottom of the ninth inning and we needed a game-winning home run in the bottom of the, you know, previous to last inning, the sixth inning, you know, it could have been worse. Of course, we could have held on and won the game that we had the lead if, you know, they didn't have that inning against Todd Peterson, but that's just how baseball can be. Sometimes baseball giveth, and sometimes baseball taketh away. <laughs> Were you uh, encouraged by, by Hess's performance and outing on yeah, Friday? Yeah, it was better. You know, I mean, he's still not great. You know, I mean, he's, you know, he's great when, I'll say he's great when he goes to seven innings and throws, you know, 89 pitches. <laughs> um, it's just that every inning is so long, you know, and it's, it's frustrating for everybody because he's in so many jams. You know, I just give anything for one, two, three inning, one, two, three inning a couple of times during, this, during the game. But to his credit, he always rises up and finds a way and gets something inside of himself that, that makes him different than a lot of guys. 
and he you know pitches out of jams, but he's like the master of the 23 pitch shutout inning. You know, <laughs> I just wish sometimes those shutout innings would take about 11 or 12 pitches. <laughs> How big of a concern is that closing home right now after Todd's well, struggles the last two rounds? It's a fair question. Um, I love Todd Peterson, and his stuff is really good. But his last three outings have not been great, you know, even the midweek. Hello, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, even the midweek against Holy Cross, we just got him in there to get his kind of, you know, get him back in tune, and it didn't go all that great. So, you know, the outing at Texas was really probably his best outing. He, 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 he got a big out in the eighth. And he had a game-ending double play that we just didn't execute, and otherwise he closes the game with Texas. In the middle of the weekend's Holy Cross, he struggled, and then of course, you know, the other day they just they put good swings on it. And I think the other day was just really about location. It's you know, his stuff was good. He just was hanging curveballs and you know throwing fastballs right down the middle, and they were hitting him. So, I, the answer to your question is I'm always concerned about everything but not terribly overly concerned about Todd because I know Todd's a great competitor and he's got really good stuff and I still feel that he's our best option at the end of the game.